Memorial Day weekend. Well, President Obama's top counterterrorism advisor, John Brennan, says our enemies should not be described as Islamists or jihadists. Listen. Our enemy is not terrorism because terrorism is but a tactic. Nor do we describe our enemy as jihadists or Islamists because jihad is a holy struggle, a legitimate tenet of Islam, meaning to purify oneself of one's community. And there is nothing holy or legitimate or Islamic about murdering innocent men, women, and children. Describing our enemy in religious terms would lend credence to the lie propagated by Al-Qaeda and its affiliates to justify terrorism that the United States is somehow at war against Islam. The reality, of course, is that we have never been and will never be at war with Islam. After all, Islam, like so many faiths, is part of America. Sounds like some things are getting mixed up here. So does the administration not understand who our enemy really is? Brigitte Gabriel is the president of actforamerica.org and author of They Must Be Stopped. And she joins us this morning. Brigitte, nice to see you this, well, this weekend. Good morning, Clayton. So when we listen to this, do you believe the president and his administration is somehow legitimizing jihad? Yes, they are legitimizing jihad. It is unfortunate. According to the five schools of Islamic jurisprudence, Clayton, and Al-Azhar University, the highest authority of Islam in the world today, they all agree that jihad means war against non-Muslims. And the translation in Arabic reads, Al-jihadu ya'ni al-harb dudda ghayr al-muslimin. So when we have the top advisor to the president and the man in charge of our counterterrorism strategy willfully ignore the basic tenets and the fundamental doctrine of our enemy that is driving them to destroy us and attack us, Americans should be very concerned, very, very concerned for their lives and our national security and the direction this administration is heading. All right, let me push you a little bit on that because as many people will say, look, this administration has actually done more to go after the people who would call for jihad against the United States of America, in fact, f sending more drone attacks than the previous administration, stepping up that, a major advancement in offensive in Afghanistan. So is there a legitimate argument, or are we just arguing over words, but the actions are actually being carried out? The, uh, uh, this administration has had nothing but failure in the way they handled this supposedly war on terror. Since President Obama became president 12 months ago, we have arrested over 55 homegrown terrorists in the United States, all Muslims either born into the Islamic faith or have converted into Islam, trying to kill Americans or carry out terror attacks against America and America's interest. They feel emboldened, they feel empowered because they believe this administration is not paying attention to what they're doing. All this right. administration is willfully ignoring the problem. All right, so then let me ask you this. Do you think then that this administration is just being politically correct? Because as people have pointed out, President Bush was also very careful not to ever use the word Islam, not to use the word Islamist. His administration was very careful on that. Are we just worried about political correctness here when what, something's really at play? Uh, no, with this administration, it is unfortunately beyond political correctness. Political correctness is when you know the problem, but because you have to be politically correct, you avoid stating the problem. This administration doesn't even acknowledge the problem. Yeah. When, when John Brennan comes and, and gives the speech that he gave, uh, ignoring the facts and the tenets of jihad and what jihad yeah. stands for, people like me from the Middle East who walk around with scars on my arms because of jihad and the way I was attacked and my life destroyed, yeah. And as a survivor of Islamic terror, when I hear the words of our top counterterrorism uh, advisor to the president saying jihad means a, a, a better, to better yourself, is absolute suicide to our country and to our nation in dealing with Brigitte, this uh, radical Islamic rise. Brigitte, we got to leave it there. It's hard not to, to square these two when we have Anwar al-Awlaki saying jihad is what we're going after right now. Brigitte Gabriel, exactly. thanks for joining us this week. A few quotes. Ibn Kathir, Islam's greatest commentator on the Quran, as you know, says, therefore all people of the world should be called to Islam. If any one of them refuses to do so, or refuses to pay the jizya, they should be fought till they are killed. Ibn Taymiyyah, certainly is not a heretic, says, whoever has heard the summons of the messenger of God and has not responded to it must be fought. He's not a heretic. The, Han, uh, the Hanafi jurist Shaybani says that Muslims are to combat those who disbelieve in God. He's not a heretic. Sheikh Burhanuddin Ali, not a heretic, says the destruction of the sword is incurred by infidels, although they be not the first aggressors. So even if they haven't shown any aggression towards you, they, by being infidels, they incur 
of the sword. This is not an infidel. According to Averroes, the, uh, the medieval master of Islamic law, he says that scholars agree that all polytheists should be fought. The Maliki jurist Ibn Khaldun says that in the Muslim community, the holy war is a religious duty because of the universalism of the Muslim mission and the obligation to convert everybody to Islam, either by persuasion or by force. The Maliki jurist uh, Ibn Abi Zaid says this, Jihad is a precept of divine institution. It is preferable not to begin the hostilities with the enemy before having invited the latter to embrace the religion of Allah, except where the enemy attacks first. They have the alternative of converting to Islam or paying the poll tax, short of which war will be declared against them. So here you have Orthodox Muslims saying that Muslims are supposed to be fighting everyone and that they are to do it in order to spread Islam. Do you expect the words, do you respect and agree with the words of all of these men? If you're consistent, you have to. If you reject anything any of these men have said, you have violated your own principle, which you are trying to force upon us. Go ahead. Well, David, it's 